But I really needed to let Darren know every time I was feeling uncomfortable or anxious because talking about it was just the best. If you don't, if you keep that bottled up, it's going to explode at some Mm -hmm. point or another, you know? And I mean, because there wasn't that much girl time, I needed to like always vent Mm -hmm. to Darren about stuff. (laughs) But the only thing is like, you know, when you're used to girls, you're always talking and you kind of want to say like your problems and not necessarily you don't need a solution. You just want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But guys are different like let's, Darren's like let's fix this let's fix this let's talk about what we're gonna do and blah blah blah, blah. and it's like no stop stop mm-hmm. stop I don't need a solution I just need you to sit there and listen mm-hmm. and say yeah no yeah you're <laughs> right you're right that is that sucks I saw something on Instagram that was like before they're about to vent they say I need to vent about something like do you have the capacity to like listen right now and like if they say yes be like do we need to find a solution or do you need someone to listen What gets us through this crazy hockey journey is our amazing community of women. Inspired by our online network, Breaking the Ice is a platform created to connect us even more as we share our stories, our passions, our tips, tricks, do's and don'ts for all things hockey, and so much more. For hockey expats, by hockey expats. So lace them up and tune in for a new episode every Wednesday. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today I have a special guest, Danielle, on, and Danielle and I have literally been trying to record together for over a year. I was looking back at our emails of when I originally started the podcast, and we've just gone back and forth so many times, and we were going to record it. We're going to try to record it in person when it first started. It didn't work out. Then I was moving to Europe. Then she was moving to Europe. Then I had my baby. And it was just, finally, we were able to record and meet in person. And it was so much fun. I absolutely loved chatting with her. And it's so nice to do face-to-face recordings because usually I do them all over Zoom audio, but I'm kind of feeling like I want to start doing video too because it is nice to be able to make that, you know, face-to-face connection. But I do spend part of my summers in Southern California and for whoever's listening that might ever be interested in the podcast, it would be so fun to do it in person if you are interested in being in the podcast and I just, just love making friends all over. So we've never played together, we've never met, and we just met up, and now I have a new friend. I was going to say I also live in Idaho in the summer, but I'm assuming that no one lives there. So, (laughs) and if you do, we need to hang out because we need more friends. I am taking a break from the podcast, which I've said a couple of times on Instagram, but going to take about a month off, maybe six weeks off, because I have a lot to do behind the scenes. I'm working on so many awesome, exciting things for our community, and I feel like I have all of these ideas, and they're definitely moving, and they're they're starting to make progress, but I also feel like I'm really disorganized within those ideas, so I really need to take this time to kind of put the podcast aside for just a minute as much as I love doing it. I'm for sure going to miss it and come back with so much energy for it at the end of my break. But I really need to focus on all of these other things so I can put it into action and start rolling them out because I feel like if I didn't take this break, then it would just prolong the process of getting started. Because as you know, with a baby, it's a lot of work to try to squeeze things in and usually it's when he's napping or late at night. So I want to really just focus on this and come back and hopefully have some exciting things rolling out in the next couple of months for you guys. I know that we are hoping to launch the early bird pricing for our retreat and that should hopefully be starting up in June. So stay tuned for that on Instagram. And if you've not subscribe to the email list. Those are going to be the first people that know where the retreat is and what the dates are. So make sure to sign up for that in my bio. This was a really great episode. We talk about so many things, just living abroad as a mom, as a wife. Danielle also has her own swimmer line that she does with her sister. It's called Oliva Swim. And if you listen till the very end of the episode, she gives us a discount code for 25% off all products on her website. She has super, super cute swimsuits. So make sure to listen all the way to the end. Use that code, apply it to your cart, and get 25% off your total price. 
We talk about so many things just when within all of these realms and especially how this year has been really hard because I feel like a lot of people couldn't get together like we normally would. So this was just a really fun face-to-face conversation and I'm excited for you to listen to this episode. All right, Danielle, welcome to the podcast. If you guys can hear waves from the ocean, that's because that's exactly what it is. We are recording this at her parents' beach house in Oceanside, and I am so excited. This is one of the few in-person interviews that I've done, so I'm so happy you're here today. Yeah, I'm so happy you came. <laughs> well, I, you have a long long hockey journey, long hockey story, and I'm excited to just hear all about it. So I'm going to kind of hand the floor over to you and just have you tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm from Long Beach, California, and so is my husband. We actually went to the same elementary, middle, high school, and he's two years older. So I've always known of Darren, but we didn't meet until high school. So we met at a Halloween party, technically, but I always like to say that a month prior, I had met him at the beach and I had braces and got absolutely no looks, no attention from him, not one from him at that point until I got my braces off and we met at this Halloween party and he was Hugh Hefner and I was a mermaid. And I was, you know, feeling myself. I had the crimpy hair. My mom <laughs> helped me make my mermaid tail and sequence bra. And yeah, we met there. And it was, I wouldn't say love at first sight, but definitely. Um, Some lust. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. So we, that's where we met. And we've been together ever since. Um, we two years apart. So I met him when I was a sophomore and he was a senior. And then the following two years, while I was in high school, he went and played juniors in Canada. So we did long distance for two years. And then from there, he got a full ride scholarship to Northern Michigan University. And I decided to walk to my career center, apply, it took me 25 minutes to apply. And I got in. So we decided to go to college together for four years. And then from there, he did two years uh, pro in the States, the EC, back and forth with the EC and AHL. And then from there, he did a year in Sweden when we did long distance again. And then the following year, I went with him, same place. And then now we're the most recent year pro in the SHL. Oh, man. Okay, so long journey, a lot to unpack. Yeah. Also, I read on your survey that you did cheerleading. I did, too. And you cheered in college. Uh Uh-huh. What was that like? That was probably the best thing I could have done. You know, going away to college with a boyfriend, you get a lot of people that, like, oh, are you sure that's what you want to do? Like... They think, you know, you're not going to make it or you shouldn't really go. You shouldn't with your... follow a boy. Yeah, you shouldn't follow a boy. But I really made sure that I had my own identity, my own friends there. So I did cheer. And my best friends are still my girlfriends from college and cheer. So I'm very thankful that I did that. So he, you know, had hockey. And then I had my cheer friends, which was nice. And another thing that we did was we never lived together during college we always like made sure we were separate he you know roomed with his friends I roomed with my friends and I think that was a really big thing for us yeah so did you cheer for his hockey team we did like it was kind (laughs) of weird because we'd be like freezing in the rink and we couldn't stunt or do anything so we'd just be doing chants but that was pretty fun yeah but usually we just did basketball and football okay nice and then you okay so then you got pregnant and that was when you guys were long distance from Sweden back home yeah so it was his first year going over to Sweden and um I'll just go out and say our first kid was not planned we actually found out 
two days before he got on the plane to leave that we were pregnant. And I it just was, got the chills. That's tough. Yeah, it was really hard, you know, to the point where he was like, I don't, I don't think I can get on this plane. Like, and I'm like, you have to get on this plane. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, <laughs> we'll be fine. Like, I'm going to come visit. But it was, um, it was very hard. Yeah. So then was the season over before you actually had your baby or did you wind up flying out there for the end? No, we were long distance. So I would go out and stay a month at a time and I would plan it so I could have all my doctor's appointments in the States. And then I would, in between my doctor's appointments, I would go stay with him. Mm -hmm. So it would be like a month here, a month there. And then when I got to, I think, 28 weeks, I stopped flying. So then we did long distance for, he was born in April. So January, February, March. So three months we were long distance after that. And then when he came home, I was like, you know, as big as the (laughs) sun. So (laughs) he was like, oh my God, you're huge. I'm like... Oh, yeah, I am. That's what's been going on over here, so welcome. (laughs) Yeah, so, and then he actually ended up coming home early, so he didn't go to playoffs with his team so he could make it for the due date, and then I ended up going, like, a week and a half late, so yeah, it was fine. Yeah, how does that work with teams if, do you know, like, do they have to... I think this team is, like, he has to do playoffs, like, he's there right now. Yeah. And there's, like, no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, he will stay the entire time. Like, I don't think they would let him leave. Yeah. Unless I'm, like, in labor. And they're and in... he would probably wouldn't make it back if you were in labor, right? Yeah. Well, the last... I was in labor for 36 hours last time. Oh. So I'm like, no, yeah, I guess you could make it yeah. I was in labor, <laughs> but... Oh, my God. 36 yeah. hours. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. And where do you give birth? In Long Beach. Okay. Yeah, California. Okay. So then now your son is how old? He just turned two on like a few days ago. Okay. So then after you had him April, so then you had kind of the off season, Mm -hmm. then you guys went back to Sweden. Yeah. In September, we were able to leave on kind of, we didn't have to do, or he didn't have to do training camp and stuff like that. So we left like... In September, which was really nice. Okay, so this wasn't this past season. It was the season before. Yeah. Was your first season Mm -hmm. actually going and living with him and taking your son. So how was that like living there for the first time? And you have your baby boy with you. What was like his experience like? Um, it was good. I mean, okay, so we were in Basterbic, um, the first year, and um. It was nice. I mean, we did a lot of walking. There's, It's a small summer town, and we go in the off-season, so there's not a lot going on. So, you know, stuff's closed on Sundays. You know, you can't... There's not much, much to mm-hmm. do. So we did a lot of, like, walking, going to parks, and it would kind of just be, like, the three of us all the time. It seems boring at the time, because mm-hmm. you kind of do the same thing over. You know, they go to practice and then you come back and you go for walks and you walk around you go to the park you fill your day kind of with the same thing every day but um I always try and look back at it and be like when we go home and he doesn't play hockey anymore or during the summers he does like a nine to five job and when we're you know during season he's off done with work at 12 and we get the whole day together to just be like a family to do whatever we want Mm -hmm. so I always try and keep that in perspective like you're not going to get this time when you go back home where it's just the three of you and you're just talking you're having fun you're playing at the park you know life kind of slows down and I really try and tell myself to like appreciate that yeah that's a good perspective I feel like I can totally relate to that because Mm -hmm. I I think you can get kind of bored of doing that same thing every single day, but yeah, the summers can be kind of crazy and you know, mm-hmm. you're always seeing family and then running here and running there and yeah. seeing people all the time. So I feel like looking back in the future, you're really going to like appreciate those memories and, yeah. and that time together, especially when, you know, you have young kids and, and yeah. they're going to not remember, but you will remember that time with them. Right. So yeah, you move back home. Yeah. For the summer. And then when did you get pregnant again? We found out three days before we left. Stop. (laughs) Again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We were like, this is not an ideal time to give birth. (laughs) I'm like, we're going to be right in the middle of playoffs, just like the last time. Mm -hmm. And the season kept getting 
pushed and pushed and pushed. So at first we're like, okay, yeah, like we'll be home, we'll make it Mm -hmm. for the birth. And then they push the season back like two weeks, three weeks. So now it's like due dates May 16th, last game of playoffs is May 15th. Like just not ideal. Mm. So (sighs) you have confirmation from the doctors here that it is in fact aligning with May 15th, right? No. You don't know. No, I because the way it lined up with my period is a different due date than the ultrasound that I got in Sweden. But now that I'm back in the States, they're telling me like, well, you're actually kind of measuring at this point. I would say your due date's May 8th again. I'm like, okay, so... You're like, that's not what I want to hear. Yeah, so they're like, let's send you to another ultrasound specialist and let's really figure out how big your baby is. I'm like, okay, so I'm I'm still hoping for May 16th. Yeah, okay. Well, you tell everybody a little bit about... We started, okay, for people that are listening, we started talking before this and I cut Daniel off. I was like, we have to talk about this on the podcast because we're going to wind up talking for three hours and I'm going to forget to record. <laughs> and I think people would think it's hilarious just some of the differences with, I guess, Swedish health healthcare and here just because you did have a majority of your doctor's appointments for the first pregnancy here so you can kind of compare the two and yeah really notice those differences so what was it like over um, in Sweden so the first difference I got is you know I went to my appointment they're like oh, okay we're gonna see you at um 10 weeks and I was like okay cool so I go <laughs> to my Swedish appointment and they do like the whole you know let's give you like a pap smear like let's check everything down there I'm like okay cool so when I go there it's like there's no gown that like goes over you you're just like spread eagle (laughs) (laughs) and you just feel so exposed so it's like they're getting in there they're doing all that um and I got blood work but I noticed they didn't check my weight to see how much I weigh or check the baby's heartbeat and I was like okay that's kind of weird maybe they forgot And then I went back the second time for the doctors. Still, they did not check the heartbeat or like check my weight. So I'm not going to know how many babies I'm having until I'm halfway done at 20 (laughs) weeks, which is when I got my ultrasound. And that's the first time they checked the baby's heartbeat. And do you have twins in your family? Um, yes, I do. Oh, gosh. But, like, you know, I still... You can still have twins in there. You might not even... (laughs) Yeah, who knows? Because I need to get another ultrasound. Yeah. No, but um, I w- I'm still pretty small, so, like, obviously, I'm assuming there's only one in there. But, well, and I did get the ultrasound. But <laughs> I was, like, freaking out. And I didn't get any genetic testing done. And I had talked to some girls, like, no, yeah, that kind of just doesn't happen unless you request it. But I didn't think about that because in the States, they're like, okay, you're going to do this, that, and the other thing. Like, we have to check all of our boxes to make sure like this baby is okay so you're gonna get genetic testing you're gonna get a glucose test which they didn't do either um and they do an ultrasound really early on just to make sure that it's going okay Mm -hmm. so i was a little freaked out by that but you know girls on the team had reassured me like it's just like the way yeah it's just the norm like it's okay and then they always tell you like But when you deliver, it's like a really, really nice experience, you know? So that's what I was like kind of thinking like, okay, if I deliver here, like it's going to be like a hotel. So that's like what I was thinking about the whole time. Mm -hmm. But it did freak me out that I didn't know how many babies I was having until I was halfway done. Yeah, (laughs) that's that's very odd. That's the first time I've actually ever heard that they don't do, like I've never heard of that before. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you have to like ask for it, but like that's not... You know, you don't really think about that when yeah. it's happening. And then I thought that genetic testing had to be done during a certain amount of weeks. And then when I passed 20 weeks, I was like, oh, shit, like, you passed your time. Like, you don't get that testing anymore. Yeah. But um, they actually, when I got here in the States, they kind of looked at my paperwork and they're like, you know what? Um, we're going to redo everything. So they, they, like, sent me for testing, like, that day yeah. just because they want they yeah. want to check all their boxes. So well, I was thankful. <laughs> and I know you you guys found out the gender, but that's a secret between your little family. Yeah. I'd be curious, even at this point, if they told you the right thing. 
<laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I feel like I have a good intuition about mm-hmm. what it is, but um, I would be shocked if, if it changed, but I also wouldn't be surprised as well. Yeah, that's funny. And I also, I don't know if you've heard this, but I think in, I think I want to say it was in Sweden, but they don't tell you the gender until 20 weeks because I guess they're worried about people not wanting to have the baby anymore because of the gender that they're having. Have you heard that before? Well, I've... So it was different because we actually found out the gender of our first kid in Vastervik and they told us at 13 weeks. Okay. We, when me and Darren did an ultrasound, we're like, oh, you probably don't know what the gender was. She's like, no, 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 I know. Do you want to know? And we're like, oh, Ah. very startled. Like we weren't expecting to know. We were just like asking to make small talk. And I was like, can you write it down for us? And she's like, yeah, okay. And then we ended up finding out, but in uh, Skeleftio, they, they're like, no, you're not going to know until week 20. So, and then I've also heard that it really depends on where you are in Sweden. Mm-hmm. I was going to say maybe like it's per, per hospital or mm-hmm. per doctor's office or yeah. something. Like, it seems just weird, though, how every place has different standards. Even yeah. in Austria, it was like you'd see one doctor and they say one thing and then another one says it's fine. And it's like, what is it? Like, I, I don't know. I guess it's just there's no, like, streamlined... Yeah. Way of doing things mm-hmm. anywhere over there. And we're not like bashing any country or anything. It's just interesting to compare the differences yeah, back home definitely. to here, even though it's obviously not the same. We're not expecting it to be the same, but yeah. there is differences. And it's, it is interesting to just hear everyone's perspectives. Mm-hmm. And yeah, are you happier back home and having the baby over here then? I'm sure yeah. that's probably. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm happy that I'm having it at the same hospital I did last time because I, Besides my birth being an absolute disaster, like the nurses and the doctors are good and the recovery center's like good. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I have really good pregnancies. Like I literally have nothing to complain about. Um, and then I just have like the worst labor. So I feel like it's either pick one or the other. Yeah. Well, if you listen to my episode last week, maybe that'll reassure you that your second baby usually comes faster. So yeah, hopefully no, yeah, that'll be the case that. and you're not in labor for 36 hours again. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. Unless Darren is still in Sweden, then I'm like, all right, I guess I'll labor for 36 hours yeah. just to make sure he gets there. Did you labor mainly at home? No, I got induced and... Uh, yeah and my doctor had told me that she's like oh you know i just want to let you know when you get induced like it could take up to 72 hours that you're in the hospital and they don't send you home like once you're induced like you stay at the hospital and it was like 12 hours and my water still like wouldn't break um because they like put like what is it the pitocin yeah they do and then i had to get the balloon and then the doctor had to come and just manually just like do it isn't that so i mean this is like literally the reason why you can't compare like birth stories but like it's weird because i heard that when you're induced it can speed everything i mean mine was so short after it was induced but yours was so long it's just it's you really can't compare because you actually have literally no idea what kind of did your mom have long labors no i think both of her labors they like she her water broke like on their own or all three of them actually and then um my husband's mom had to be induced twice so i know on your podcast they were talking about how sometimes the genetics of the husband i didn't know that i didn't know either and i was like oh it kind of makes sense yeah so very interesting Mm -hmm. so uh, i know that you were kind of saying that some of the things that you struggled with was finding Balance isn't the right word, but just, like, being over in Sweden, there's not a lot to do, especially just with, like, COVID times and just, like, struggling with how to spend time day to day. What was that like for you being over there this year especially, I would say? Well, this year, I had a really tough time the first two months, I would say. And right in the beginning of the sweet, right in the beginning of the season, they went on so many away trips, like long away trips. And I wasn't really like comfortable being in this new city. And because it was COVID, you know, a lot of the girls were nervous to like hang out. So I was very like secluded in my own apartment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would wake up, I would go for a walk because the sun isn't out that long. So, you know, you need to do all your stuff 
while it's light outside because then it's like, you know, I have that California mentality where it's like, you know, you do need to be careful when you go out and walk at night, even though that's not a thing really in Sweden. I still felt even that as way. Even a, a female. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I always felt like, okay, I got to do all my stuff before it gets dark out. So what sun came out at 10 in the morning, went down at two. So, you know, you feel very like the days are long mm -hmm. and you're just like, okay, well I got to get outside and walk around. And then that was it. And you know, that's kind of what I did. I, I have my own business and, um, I would try and like work while Declan napped mm -hmm. and you know, so I would work and then it's like, Oh, crap you need to get outside get some vitamin d and then come back inside and then it's dark how does that affect his sleep schedule do you think it, it's um, fine because usually they need like a dark room to nap in yeah he he's a really good sleeper i really like cannot complain he's been sleeping throughout the whole night since he was three weeks old till like i mean now oh my God, that's amazing yeah so he's <laughs> always been really good so um i would go take him for a walk he'd fall asleep in a stroller i'd walk him upstairs he would sleep two hours and mm -hmm. I would get whatever work I could get done and then he'd wake up, but it's dark outside and I'm, you know, if Darren was on an away trip, I wouldn't like go out and like play outside with him. So yeah. it's like, we're kind of stuck in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sucked. But, um, yeah, so I really struggled for like the first two months and I was pregnant and the first trimester for me is like so Bad. Like, I'll take the third trimester over the first one, like, any day of the week. Like, my emotions are just, like, going crazy. I don't feel like myself. Um, just the time change was crazy. And, yeah, it was just a really tough two months where I was, like, you know, calling my sister, like, crying and my mom but I didn't want to like tell Darren because I, you know, he's stressed out. He's trying to like find this flow on a new team and, you know, figure out how he's going to like play and stuff. But like, I'm in my mind, I'm just like, I just want to go home. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't feel like not supported, but I just like, I need girl time. I need family time. And I wasn't getting that. Um, but it took a, like a while. Then I finally like told Darren how I was feeling and, he was like, no, I totally get it. And he's like, what do we need to do to like make you feel more comfortable? And I'm like, I don't know. And it really was my emotions with my pregnancy. Cause once I got into the second trimester, I felt like calm, mm -hmm. you know, like I wasn't having these like anxiety attacks about like being alone. And I would, you know, he would go for an, a road trip and I would like wait to put Declan down. I would like cry like mm -hmm. in the shower, I'd be like, oh my God, like why am I feeling like this? Mm -hmm. But then, it's tough. yeah, and you really just, I cannot control how I feel during that first trimester, and it really took a toll on me. And then it got better. Like, when the snow starts falling, there's definitely more to do outside. Like, there's a, a ski resort connected to, like, the hockey rink, so we would just, you know, five-minute drive, and we'd go play in the snow and mm -hmm. on the mountain and stuff. So that was nice, and it, it really did get better. Mm -hmm. I will say. I think people from the outside really don't realize how much time that we spend with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, it, there's a lot of alone time. I mean, the guys are gone, and especially if you're pregnant, and then, you know, if you're... Even if you were there towards the end of your pregnancy, I mean, at yeah. any point, you could something could happen, and they're on the road, and that's another stressor, and then just yeah. being by yourself in a new country... And I think it's really common, and I, for me too, is just like when I go over there the first month or two, it is a huge adjustment because, mm -hmm. and I think even coming back here, it's quicker because it's more familiar, it's your home, it's your language, it's you know where everything is. But when you go over there, it's it's all new. You have a new group of girls. You have you don't know where the store is. You don't know mm -hmm. where every you know. It's like where am I? <laughs> and then when they leave for the first time, you don't have anyone around really and I know especially in Sweden there's not a lot of imports which you know like you said you had a really good friend on the team and there are some like really amazing non-imports yeah but it is hard because it can be clicky sometimes and yeah I think those especially like the first month or two it's always a huge adjustment if you're going somewhere completely new yeah 
No, definitely. Yeah, and like you said, I had a really good friend. She was, um, she's from Finland, and she had been there the year before, and she's very outgoing. She'd always like, oh, let's go do this. Like, let's take our kids to go swimming, or let's do this. So I really have to like thank her for like always getting me like out and like mm-hmm. doing stuff. And she's like, let's go for coffee. Like, she would always be on her phone, being like, oh, this cafe just opened up. Like, let's go do this. Let's go do that. So mm-hmm. I, you know, it's I'm very thankful for girls that like are inclusive yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so that was very nice so shout out to Heidi she was like super shout out Heidi yeah good job (laughs) yeah thank you (laughs) but um it makes a huge difference and I think you really have to do that and I think more than not we get in little ruts sometimes where we don't even realize we're in it but mm -hmm. like I don't know if you get like that but I for sure sometimes get super introverted and I'm like I don't do anything for a week and then I'm like oh my god like I need to go socialize with someone yeah. because I feel down and depressed and I need to go like be with someone that's in the same position as me over here not in my home country or just not like, just somewhere new right and it's it mm-hmm. makes you feel better after you like have those interactions I don't know like I always feel like I come back home and I feel like, lighter yeah like rejuvenated yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah I would go on walks and uh, in my stroller and just being like pregnant, you know, older pe- old people like to stop you and like say hi and stuff. But even just like having those small conversations with strangers mm-hmm. would like make me feel like lighter mm-hmm. when I got home. Like, oh, okay, like, you know, just to talk to someone because you really don't notice how alone you are, especially during COVID. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And I think COVID makes you hypersensitive too of everything. Like, I was very testy Mm -hmm. towards things that wouldn't normally bother me. Like, you know, if someone was staring at me or something, I felt so invaded. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what are you looking at? Just because I was not happy because it was COVID, you know? It's just like, I think it really affects every aspect of just your, like, mental health and just, Mm -hmm. like, being over away from home, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, but... And I want to be, like, sensitive to everyone that's still, like, over there right now. I think, like, I'm kind of in a space where I'm, like, home. And I'm, like, oh, my God, it's been a long time coming. So I'm really just trying to soak it in. But do you just did you just feel, like, an instant sense of relief when you got home? Because that's how I did. Like, I just feel so much more at ease. Yeah. I felt more at ease that I wasn't in airports anymore. Because yeah. <laughs> that was, like, a 40-hour day with my toddler. And I was just, like... You know, when you get out of the LAX airport, I'm just like, oh, it smells like warm weather. Like, it just, it's (laughs) nice to smell the air and not an airport. Yeah. How was that um, travel day with a toddler and obviously you're super pregnant? Um, It was okay. It was as good as it could have been. Like, I really have to thank my toddler. He slept all three flights. Um, I think total he was probably awake for three hours of the whole ordeal like the long flight he he was asleep yeah. and he just chilled and wow. watched cartoons with no sound because <laughs> I, the iPad <laughs> because I forgot his headphones oh, no. so he was I know, bet that was a fun thing to realize yeah and um he doesn't we've never given him an iPad so he doesn't know how to use it so this time we're like oh maybe we'll give him the iPad and like see how he does but he can't click the screen properly because he just doesn't know how. So he literally would sit there and watch cartoons with no sound on the <laughs> flight. And I was like, oh, you're being so good. Oh, good. So he was as good as he could have been. But, like, I didn't sleep any of the flights. I was so tired. And before I left on the flight, my midwife had told me the baby's head was down. And then when I came home and saw a doctor, they were like, oh, that's weird. The baby's head's over on the side. So now I'm thinking like, oh my God, did that happen on the plane just from, you know, doing Mm. so much walking through the airports because no one really wants to help you right now because it's COVID. Uh So like you're walking the entire time. And you probably had to switch all your luggage out. I didn't because we went to Germany. So that was huge. If you stop in the States... You then do. you do because you have to go through customs and or immigration or whatever. That's so you actually can... so good. To, I was asked, sorry to just totally cut you off, but okay. I was asked my husband, I said, do you have to do this if you have a layover in, within Europe? Because no. 
this is a lot. I mean, we had to do that. And I was sweating. I'm like holding. A, I mean, it, it was a mess. But anyway, sorry. Continue. Yeah, I did have to take my luggage. So Scaleftio has a airport like 20 minutes from the city. And then you fly into Stockholm. But um, the travel agent had kind of fudged up my name and put my middle name as my last name. So it messed up my ticket and Germany was like not gonna accept what my passport said versus what my ticket name had said. So I, she had to like call both airports and like make it okay. Always something. Yeah, so I was freaking out, but I had to pick up all my luggage in Stockholm because I was staying overnight in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be a lot to like carry um, all my stuff to the hotel. But this lady that I had met one time at a pizza restaurant, Scaleftia, um, Scaleftio, um, had recognized me. She's like, hey, um, let me help you take all your luggage to the hotel. Like, I have a ton of time. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you're kidding me right now. She's like, oh yeah. She goes, I don't know if you remember, but we met at the pizzeria. I know your husband plays hockey, blah, blah, let me help you. And so she took all my luggage to the hotel and I... Literally, I was like, if it wasn't COVID, I, I would give you a big hug and kiss. Like, thank you so much for helping me. People like, like that are angels. Oh, my god! Literally. Like, I, was, she's an angel. Yeah. I was so, like, thankful. So the next morning, I woke up, you know, got my um, luggage on the flight. And the Stockholm airport, which was really nice, gave me a loner stroller. So that helped a lot. But when I went to Germany, I was like, is there any way I could get like a stroller, get some help? They're like, no, we can't really help you during this time. And I was like, oh God. So I had to carry my son the whole way. And I actually strapped him to the harness. And you're not really supposed to wear the harness like at this time because I was 32 weeks pregnant. And I definitely like, I think strained my body to the most for sure yeah being in like those airports and then being on the flight and then getting off the plane in LA and walking to customs and carrying him and two other bags and I was just like yeah this is it took me like a few days to not feel that pressure like I was about to deliver mm -hmm. so mm. it was tough but I was you know I really have to think that my son was an angel throughout the whole time i'm sure your husband was super worried about you getting back yeah yeah i told him i was like you know what your mindset you're just like i gotta do what i gotta do i have to get home it's like the adrenaline i feel like yeah. gets you through at that point but i tell him like i'll never do it again yeah <laughs> i'm like i did it yeah and it was fine i survived but i'm not doing that again no i just don't want to no you can fly out later but you gotta have some sort of family help yeah i mean you just have to how, yeah. how the heck else would you be able to do that now that you have another one on the way? You know what I mean? Like, it would just be, it, that would just be mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah, <laughs> but I, people do it. There's some people that travel with three or four kids by themselves. And I just look at them and I'm, I want to just bow down because how? Yeah. That's my question. And if you're listening and you do that, please message me. I would like to know how you do that because you are literally like. A superhero yeah and I was like and you are too by the way <laughs> thank you so much and I had like strangers always asking like do you need help like let me take your bags let me put your stuff in the overhead bin let me you know help you get your luggage on the conveyor belt whatever and I always took the help and I was like nervous no one was gonna offer because it was COVID and like the employees at the airports never offered to help. It was always like a stranger. Mm -hmm. And I always was like, yes, thank you so much, you know? Yeah. And you're always worried that, you know, you won't get help during COVID because no one wants to like touch you or be around you. I'm like, no, someone please help me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take any help I can get. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I noticed this just flying pregnant and flying with a baby. Like the flight attendants are so helpful. Mm -hmm. Like when I flew home, they were like, Literally, as I'm walking down the gate to the plane, I clearly have a ton of shit. I have my dogs. I mean, my husband was with me, but literally walk right up to me like, can I take the baby? Yeah. Can I hold him? I'm like, please. Like, please take him. Like, so yeah. I can just, like, get myself. Because, I mean, I'm just, like, you know, all over the place. And it's just so nice to have someone for two. And so is my husband. So it's, like, then you have a beat. And it's, like, for someone to just take them for just two seconds. 
Yeah. It's such a huge help. And I, I had a great experience, which I was nervous about. But I mean, even if they're on the plane, I don't know if you've ever had that happen too, but they'll take them and they'll just walk around or. Yeah. I haven't had that just because both times he's always sleeping on these like long flights. You're lucky. Which is super nice. (laughs) But I will say, um, we flew Lufthansa for the long haul in the flight and we were nervous that, you know, I wanted to get back before he turned two years old. Because I didn't think he'd be able to wear a mask. And, you know, you see the videos of people getting kicked off mm-hmm. flights and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I will say that, and I don't know if this is, like, not part of their protocol, but there was definitely, like, five-year-old kids that didn't have to wear masks. And I was, like, pretty thankful. Like, just in case, you know, on the way back, if we could get that same airline, I won't have to worry yeah. about, you know, making sure Declan, like, keeps a mask on or something. So I thought that was kind of nice. And how would it's i don't understand that it's like how are you supposed to keep a mask on a two-year-old for 15 hours no he would never i mean what it, that doesn't seem right to me i don't know why they're trying to enforce that yeah like i don't mind wearing one but because in sweden you don't have to wear a mask mm. getting in the airports and putting a mask on i was like oh my gosh i am not used to this like mm-hmm. i cannot breathe like mm-hmm. i cannot imagine a two-year-old that's never had to wear a mask put one on on a plane Mm -hmm. and keep it on Mm -hmm. because I can barely like keep mine on yeah I was listening to a podcast that said that um you should start practicing before Mm -hmm. and and maybe make it kind of something fun yeah like I don't know you can find like a YouTube thing where the kids are wearing masks or they're doing you know oh cool you want to put your mask on just to like get them more excited about it rather than like okay you need to wear this now because people are sick Mm -hmm. to turn it into kind of like a game so I don't know you should maybe look into that for your flight back because no definitely I don't know I just that's just so stressful especially I've seen those videos too and I just can't believe how insanely strict some of I think it's just per person but just like how some of the airlines are I just can't believe it yeah and it really depends I think on the airline like I think the Lufthansa flight it was such a long flight like mm-hmm. it was 11 hours they're just like we don't have time to go to every kid and make sure they're wearing yeah, a mask exactly too much effort mm-hmm. so you also um you have your own business that you run from over in Sweden will you just tell everybody about that I know we partnered with you guys or we I partnered with <laughs> you guys for a giveaway and you have the cutest swimsuits scrunchies all of that stuff so tell me about it Thanks. So the swimwear company is called Oliva Swimwear, O-L-I-V-A Swimwear. And on Instagram, we are at Oliva Swim. Me and my sister started it when we graduated college. I graduated with a business entrepreneurship degree, and she did um, fashion merchandise at Cal State Long Beach. And so, you know, we've always loved loved swimwear it's you know just kind of yeah we're we're always at the beach how do you not you know love swimwear by the beach so how old is it we started in 2016 started selling 2017 um and we're coming out with our new line this month and i was able to do a lot of work while i was back in sweden on the computer and stuff and what inspired you to start a swimwear line just living by the beach and growing up and yeah well we've always loved swimwear and we've always you know we've bought a lot of swimsuits but kind of felt like oh like we wish we could find a swimsuit that like did this or did that Mm -hmm. and you know something you could wear all day long so we had we got like really really good fabric we call it as soft as butter you know, we wanted the swimwear, you know, for all body types in the beginning. But when we started doing the design, it didn't end up working out that way. We started our swimwear company kind of thinking what we thought the market wanted. Mm -hmm. Whereas like now I feel like we're more confident with our brand and who we are that we're making swimwear more so for everyone. Whereas Mm -hmm. like maybe last you know, when we started our brand, we thought we were, you know, making it for everyone, but it didn't really turn out that way. We still, in the back of our minds, thought, like, this is the swimwear that... The people want. Yeah, but yeah. not necessarily. I feel like now that our brand is more mature, we have a better ideal of what our customers want. Mm-hmm. You know, at first it was very cheeky and skimpy because that's what we saw on 
Instagram in the market, but now it's like we're a little more full coverage. Like we want people to feel confident wearing it all day. So our stuff's a little more full coverage. Like it holds you in a little better. It's not necessarily what, you know, the Instagram models are wearing, but something that's going to make a normal woman feel confident. So I feel like it took us a while to get there. You know, we were always kind of struggling like, well, this is what these brands are doing. Like we should do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And now we're just like, no, this isn't what real women want. Like Mm -hmm. let's make swimwear that is actually for the average woman, not the woman that wants to look like an Instagram model because it's, it's all, it's not realistic. It's bullshit. Like, yeah, for sure. You know, I know. I feel like I always struggle to find, I'm going to. I've been on your site, but I'm going to look again because I need new bathing suits and I always struggle to find bathing suits that I feel comfortable in. Mm -hmm. It's, but you're right. Like, I feel like a lot of them are very just like skimpy and I'm like, that's just not that really the stage of my life that I'm in. And that's great if that is what you're comfortable in, but that's for me, it's not. So, and we were in our, um, like younger 20s mm-hmm. so yeah this is what we it's transitioned want. Like, as you've yeah, older. i went to the beach and i wore i wore a thong but <laughs> and like yeah i just that's what i would wear and i would you know it was about tan lines and whatnot but now i'm like you know i've got kids and i'm going to the beach and mama's got to bend over and <laughs> i don't think everyone needs to see that which is you know and sometimes i you know, I still wear that stuff. But now that we're getting older, I feel like our brand is also evolving. Mm-hmm. Reaching more yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing. We struggled between building a bathing suit brand that we saw online that these Instagram models are wearing. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, through the years, people are like, oh, do you have a little more coverage? Like something I could wear like around my family and feel comfortable. I'm like, No, but like we're working on it. So this new line that we're coming out with is you're going to feel comfortable, but you're also going to feel sexy. And we have these like colors coming out that are honestly just to die for. I'm super excited. I get so giddy about fabric. It's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing. When does that come out? Um, This month. So we are in April. So at the end of April, we're going to have our one piece come out. Yeah. And that was another cool thing about being overseas was, you know, I, you have so much downtime that I was able to basically everything I didn't know how to do. I taught myself. Mm -hmm. I always say I got my, you know, degree from NMU, but I got my separate degree from YouTube. Like, you know, I learned, you can learn anything on YouTube. I learned how to pattern make, I learned how to make digital graphics on um adobe that's awesome. basically everything so i am thankful for that downtime that i'm able to you know learn and fine-tune these skills so now you know i can do the process of making a swimwear completely on my own from start to finish mm-hmm. and i think that's a really good thing if you're looking to like use a manufacturer or do it on your own to really know from start to finish the process Mm -hmm. of, you know, what you're making. So you don't, you know, get taken advantage of, or they don't try and hike up a price. You can just be like, look, I know how many steps it takes to make that swimsuit bottom. Like you're not going to charge me this much because, and you know, charge another amount for this when I know that swimsuit takes way more steps and you're just trying to overcharge me. Right. So it is, I feel, I think knowing more steps into how something's created has made me more confident as like a business owner, as Mm -hmm. a designer, as Mm -hmm. a, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you do maternity? No, but you know what? I am just as big as a whale right now. And I (laughs) think I am going to, I have to. I think you should, because let me tell you, I could not find any bathing suits. Not that I needed them in Europe this year, but I just still had to bring five with me for some reason. Just mm-hmm. because I th- I always think I'm going on this big tropical vacation I'm, every time I fly over there and it never winds up happening, but yeah. I wish. But I was looking for, I should say, because of COVID. But I, um, you know, I could not find a maternity bathing suit at all. Anyway. Yeah. So that's a, that's yeah. a note. Well, I know in Sweden, they don't sell any maternity in stores unless you buy online. 
but you can't buy online unless you have a Swedish credit card. You can't purchase with your yeah. American credit card. So it's like, I could not online shop, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Like, we saved a lot of money yeah. during that time. <laughs> yeah. But I needed clothes and my, um, my mother-in-law and my mom were shipping stuff over and none of our packages made it this year. Mm. They all like got opened or they would say like, oh, we tried delivering it to your house. And it's like, no, you didn't. I'm home all day. Yeah. Like, you did not try that and deliver. To us too. Yeah. It's like, no. And that was three packages, like big packages. So yeah. they would just send it back. Um, but I had a lot of maternity clothes that they were trying to send to us and never got them. And yeah. we didn't, I couldn't buy online and they had nothing yeah. in the stores. So that's definitely a thing. If you're going to be pregnant and go overseas, make sure you bring your clothes with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because sometimes, like you said, things will just not make it. Yeah. So. Darren was in, <laughs> you know, he played in Missouri. I would bring my swimsuits. And he's like, where, where are we going to go swimming? There's no <laughs> lake. There's nothing. I'm like, I know, but I have to bring them with me. I like, like. <laughs> Don't ask it's questions. Like a, it's like a stuffed animal or something. I'm like, they go with me ev- everywhere. When I went to NMU, I brought all my swimsuits. Oh, my gosh. I just, I can't. Yeah. They, yeah. I, it's a it's an attachment issue. I, <laughs> I brought way too many. I don't blame you. Well, you can be your own model for your yeah for your company anyway. So. Yeah. so. <laughs> well, how do you so how do you balance it all, mom, wife, business, and especially overseas? Um, I think it's routine, is more than anything. Like routine, routine, routine. The, some of the best advice I got um, when having kids was make sure you get up earlier than your kids wake up and have that time to yourself so sometimes Declan will wake up at seven sometimes eight but me and Darren will wake up at 5 30 and we have our coffee and that's where I like to like write my list for the day of what I'm gonna do that's when I usually start doing work for Oliva on my computer or just writing notes but I take that time for myself Mm -hmm. every time in the morning just in case I can't find it during the rest of the day so then Declan wakes up we do breakfast um we go on a walk he falls asleep he takes a two-hour nap I do work during that two-hour nap Darren comes home from practice then we go out and we play and we like kind of make sure he get you know Declan is outside and is playing and then we either go to the grocery store and have dinner and then that's kind of it he yeah showers on time he reads a book then we throw him in his bed and he puts himself to sleep Mm -hmm. so that's probably the best thing like I really try and stick to a routine constantly like if Darren's on an away trip Mm -hmm. even here like I'm still like getting in that rhythm but the routine is so important to make sure I'm like able to do what I want to do during that day yeah absolutely what are some tips because I think like even for me this is something that I need to work on is like because it is so challenging for me and I know that you've said it's challenging for you as well but just going overseas sometimes I struggle with being a supportive wife I guess I am hockey wise Mm -hmm. but if that makes sense, but like more so just like emotionally, because sometimes I feel like I get so caught up in my emotions. Yeah. Do you feel like that? And like, what, how do you support him emotionally? Cause it's hard for the guys too. I just feel like they don't yeah. express it as much as we do mm-hmm. as women. Yeah. I mean, you try and be supportive. You know, a lot of times you're going to a new team every single season. So you're trying to like, you don't want to put your emotions on them because they're dealing with trying to figure out who they are Mm -hmm. on the team and meeting the guys and stuff like that. So I kept a lot of stuff bottled in and honestly the best is to just talk about it. Like if I was feeling anxious that day, I would let him know. I'm like, Oh Darren, like I'm kind of feeling like anxious. He's like, why? And I would, I'd be like, I don't know, but I'm feeling anxious. He's like, well, let's go outside. Like, fresh air was so like important this mm-hmm. season like and I could feel it. if I was like inside the apartment too much because it was dark outside I was like I need to go outside like I need to make sure I'm going on a walk and which what was nice about um Skeleftio is it's right on the water mm-hmm. and we had an That's apartment nice. downtown so I would just like put him in the stroller and we'd go and just sit by the water and play in the snow so you know just being outside was 
huge so important and yeah being supportive but i really needed to let darren know every time i was feeling uncomfortable or anxious because talking about it was just the best thing yeah yeah but if you don't if you keep that bottled up it's gonna explode at some Mm -hmm. point or another you know yeah but and i mean because there wasn't that much girl time i needed to like always vent Mm -hmm. to darren about stuff (laughs) but the only thing is like you know when you're used to girls you're always talking and you you kind of want to say like your problems and not necessarily you don't need a solution you just want to talk about it Mm -hmm. but guys are different like darren's like let's fix this let's fix this let's talk about what we're gonna do and blah 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 blah. and it's like no stop stop Mm -hmm. stop i don't need a solution i just need you to sit there and listen Mm -hmm. and say yeah no yeah you're (laughs) right you're right that is that sucks yeah i gosh this is every single time i try to say like a quote or a meme or something i f it up so i'm not gonna say it right but i saw something on instagram that was like that i saw that someone speaks to their family and before they're about to vent they say like like if i were to say to you like i need to vent about something like do you have the capacity to like listen right now and like if they say yes be like yes do you need someone do you need do we need to find a solution or do you need someone to listen and they said it was like a huge game changer for like their just how their family dynamic was because I do think like some people try to fix it or Mm -hmm. you know and I do that too I catch myself doing it with my friends venting or something I'm like oh okay well like how can blah 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 but it's like sometimes people just want you to listen and vent and yeah get things off your chest and so my sister's really good like I'll call her I'll you know I would FaceTime her a lot and I would just tell her whatever I was going through and she's really good at being like no yeah I totally get it, totally get it. And then I would talk to Darren, he'd be like, yeah, but maybe we should do this, we should do that. I'm like, those are great points, but Mm -hmm. that's, you know, I just need you to listen. Don't Mm -hmm. solve my Mm -hmm. my problems. I get that Let's just have a girl talk. Exactly. Yeah, I know. That's (laughs) I told you. If you could do that for me, that'd be huge. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) that'd be a game changer. I, I'm like, I miss living with girls sometimes because I miss oh, that. I mean, not that I, I don't think I could ever have a roommate ever again, but just like yeah. I do miss that, you know, kind of banter if you need to talk or whatever. But I had that same conversation with Charlie when I was feeling down, just I'm like, this sucks. Like, I'm alone. I'm pregnant. I'm, yeah. I have no one around and I want to go home, blah, blah, blah. And like Charlie was like doing that kind of toxic positivity, which he didn't even know what that was. So I like explained it to him and was like, mm-hmm. that's like, you're trying to make every situation positive And I just want to like sit in my feelings and like yeah. feel this. And he would say things like, we're lucky to have a contract. And there might be some people that see people complaining as that way. Like, oh, we're lucky. It's like, yes, I know. Like, I'm yeah. grateful to have a contract. I know there's a lot of people that don't. And I'm not saying I'm not thankful for that, but I'm still allowed to feel these yeah. feelings. Mm-hmm. So just... Let me feel them, and yeah. then I will move. I, I move through my feelings pretty quick. So if I'm feeling a certain way, I'm like, I can get over it quickly. But I'm like, I just have to like say it, and then I'll move on. Yeah, no, definitely. Or like sometimes I, I mean, again, in my first trimester of pregnancy, but I would just feel so much, and I'd be like, oh, I just need to like take a shower and like cry, and then I'm gonna come out and I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. like the thing. Crying is like the why. most therapeutic yeah. way to like get your feelings out yeah and i wouldn't like darren would be like so worried like oh are you okay i'm like i just need this like, yeah. let me just let me just like just it's like screaming it. like let yeah. me just get my emotions out and then i'll be good <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> yeah well i'm so happy that we did this this was so fun I this know. view is just like the most relaxing ever way better than sitting in my closet or in my tiny apartment in austria <laughs> so thank you for inviting me over and if people want to find you where can they find you on instagram um so my personal account is d cornwell d c o r n w e l l uh i think it's 416 or it's four and then my swimwear company is at oliva swim o-l-i-v-a swim so you can follow both um usually i can tell when it's like a hockey wife or girlfriend because they always follow you so i always like because i'm on private so but i'll always follow them back but i want to thank you for having this podcast because it's it really helped me 
during this past season like I would save your podcast for a really long road trip oh. and it would like give me life when I was like feeling down or like feeling lonely I would listen to the podcast and be like oh girls are feeling the exact same way I am and that's like huge and I would recommend it to anyone like if I met like a new girlfriend in Sweden I'm like oh you gotta listen to this podcast oh, it really you. does help a lot so ugh. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And yeah, that's definitely just why I wanted to start it. And like, I've got to connect with so many amazing people Mm -hmm. like yourself. And it's like, I literally feel like I've made friends all around the world. And I think like so many people have also started making these connections through the podcast and like, Hey, I'm, and I'm sure people will reach out to you, you know, and hopefully follow your swimwear, get some cute swimsuits. And yeah, it's just such a great networking tool for all of us to not feel so trapped sometimes yeah and I've I've reached out to girls that have been on your podcast because they've like traveled through the same Mm -hmm. airports or they're pregnant or whatever Mm -hmm. and it definitely makes you feel comfortable for reaching out you know and I would welcome anyone if they have questions about anything about living in Sweden or traveling with the toddler like feel free to reach out because I reached out to girls and it really helped me Thank you so much for listening. Take 25% off using the code breaking the ice at alivaswimwear.com. You can find the link in the show notes. And if you have not rated and reviewed the podcast, please just take two minutes to do this and I will see you next week.